The First Baptist Church of Crawford was organized on August 3rd, 1878 by W.B. Bowen and P. O'Keefe. And the following were the 11 original members. A.F. Damon, A.H. Meredith, Lucinda Meredith, A.E. Hedrick, J.F. Wicks, S.E. Wicks, O.N. Wicks, Ellen E. Norman, D.H. Temples, Susan and Martha Temples. And I love this note. Some lists show that Philip Nolan was also a member. <laughs> Just like Baptists. We keep records. We don't keep great records, but we keep records. P. O'Keefe served as the first pastor for just over a year, and the first deacons to serve were A.F. Damon and Phil Nolan. We don't know if he was an original member, but he definitely was one of the first two deacons. And in those early days, First Baptist Church of Crawford met in the Crawford schoolhouse. And the history of this church carried on for 140 years and counting. We stand in a long line of faithful people. We can look back in our church history and say to get to this point, it took a lot of faithful people. And it is my prayer that uh, 140 years down the road, if the Lord chooses to tarry, that people would look back at us and find us faithful. It reminds me of this great passage that we'll read in a moment where the writer of Hebrews says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. cloud of witnesses of First Baptist Church, 140 years old. We stand surrounded by a 140-year-old cloud of witnesses. Join me in reading Hebrews 12, the first three verses. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. If you've got it open, give me a loud amen. amen. Some of you still have tears in your eyes from the baptism and the child dedication. You'll have to wipe those away so we can focus on these three verses. Hebrews chapter 12, if you're ready for it, let me hear a loud amen. amen. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses... Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. It's three short verses. It's worth reading again. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. First Baptist Church of Crawford as a 140-year-old cloud of witnesses. When the writer of 
Hebrews penned that phrase, such a great cloud of witnesses. He, he penned that line, thinking back to the heroes of faith he had mentioned in chapter 11. In, in a powerful passage, he describes how, by faith, Noah built an ark. By faith, Abraham believed the promises of God. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. By faith, Rahab protected the people of God. He tells story after story after story. And turning the corner into Hebrews chapter 12, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that group mentioned in Hebrews 11, of course, surrounds us this morning as well. And so do the many faithful people that have sat in these pews and the pews that were here before these pews and the chairs at a schoolhouse and many other places in between. We, we are surrounded by those heroes of faith in Hebrews 11, and we're also surrounded by the heroes that have been faithful to God in difficult times throughout the 140-year history of this church. I hope that as you're making your way to your car today, you'll step out into the courtyard to a historical marker that we dedicated nine years ago today. And it traces some of the history of the 140 years of this church. And you'll see some, some names of people that played important roles. You'll, you'll see the names of pastors that led the church through significant times. Specifically, you'll see a few names. You'll see the name of George W. Truitt, who while he was a student at Baylor University, led revivals for this church. He went on to pastor the First Baptist Church in Dallas for over 40 years and was recognized worldwide as a Baptist leader. Today, if you take a trip to Baylor University and you walk the campus, you will find the George W. Truett Theological Seminary named in his honor. If you return back to that courtyard, uh, you'll see the name of J.B. Tidwell, who pastored this church in 1913 as he was the head of the Baylor Religion Department. And again, a worldwide scholar in Baptist life. Again, if you walk the campus of Baylor University, you'll find the J.B. Tidwell Bible Building named in his honor. All apart of the history of this church. But if you return back to the courtyard and, and you look at that historical marker, I've said this before and I'll say it again, there's countless names that you won't see. You won't see the, the faithful men and women that have served in the nursery over 140 years of our history. Imagine that. Imagine how many men and women have crawled on their hands and knees in an attempt to preach the gospel to our little ones. You won't see any other names. You won't see the names of countless VBS directors who planned a weekend in a hundred degree heat. A week. I say a weekend. We wish it was a weekend, right? A full week in a hundred degree heat. So the kids of this community could hear the gospel, perhaps for the very first time. Think about that. VBS has happened here maybe 140 times. A good number of years, those 140 years. What, what's missing from that marker is the countless Sunday school teachers who, in the midst of busy life, put together a Bible study lesson so that they could lead Sunday school classes in this church. And had to fend off every question under the sun. <laughs> what you 
don't see on that historical marker is um, the countless men and women that when members of this church die, take care of a grieving family by putting things in order, and preparing food, unlocking doors, vacuuming floors so that in the middle of a week we can have a funeral service in this sanctuary. I could go on and on. What you don't see on that historical marker is the list of names of people who sacrificially give to this church so that the lights can stay on for 140 years. What you don't see on that historical marker are the countless people that have sat in these pews or other pews and shouted amen to encourage a pastor. What you don't see on that historical marker are countless names of people who every day of the week have gotten down on their knees and prayed to God in heaven for the ministries of this church. A lot of names. cloud of witnesses that goes back 140 years. You humor me a bit here. Uh, because those names are not out on the historical marker, I want to see maybe if we can at least embarrass a few of those people. Because we baptized today, if you were baptized, uh, not necessarily in this sanctuary, but if you were baptized at First Baptist Church of Crawford, could you stand If you, oh yeah, we'll keep going. Please keep standing. Keep standing. Um, uh, if you've ever worked in the nursery at First Baptist Church Crawford, could you stand? If you've ever, oh, we'll, we can clap for that. If you've ever uh, been a member of a committee at First Baptist Crawford, could you stay in? Yes, yeah, that should be everybody, right? Uh, if you've ever sang in the choir at First Baptist Crawford, you stand. If you've ever been on a mission trip with First Baptist Crawford, could you stand? All right. If you've ever financially given to this church, could you stand? All right. If you've ever attended worship in this church, could you stand? that's everybody. Right? We are all a part of the 140-year history of this church, and I pray that when people look back at us, they will find us faithful. Please be seated. And our reach extends beyond Crawford. Just this morning, um, a, a, a letter was placed into my hands. This person is so smart, they knew that I would not check my email this morning. So this was sent to someone else with the instructions to get it into my hands. And they were faithful to that task. All of us are a part of the Crawford community. Um, this letter comes from um, Mircha, who we call Chacha, a missionary that we support in Romania. And he writes, I'll read us a bit of it. He says, I praise the Lord Jesus Christ for your church and for the strong message and testimony you deliver around your community and around the world. I do not know the history of your church, but I know the difference you make in so many lives. It is a blessing for you to let yourself be used by the living God to change eternity for the people who drink the living water God springs through your church. It says, I don't know much about your past, but I do know what you did for the mission work in Romania the past several years. With you being by our side and being ready to do the work God has called you in Romania, you have brought many people to the kingdom of God. Thank you for all of your sacrifice and the huge efforts you have made through this effort. I do remember each one of you and miss you all. Much appreciation in Jesus Christ. Chacha. 
through people being faithful, God can do a great work. Mm -hmm. Thinking about the next 140 years, we must remain focused on Jesus Christ. If you remember Hebrews 12 that we read a moment ago, the, the writer spins off that phrase, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. It's a beautiful phrase, but he doesn't stay there long. He doesn't linger on this great cloud of witnesses. He mentions it and then quickly points us to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by, the, surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything. Let us throw off the sin that so easily entangles us. Let's throw it off. And do what? Run the race marked out for us. How? By fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ, Amen. the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And then in case we need a refresher course on Jesus, the writer of Hebrew reminds us that Jesus went to the cross on our behalf. And then he gives the exhortation. So, so do not grow weary. Consider Jesus and do not grow weary or lose heart. I can tell you, I won't linger here long, but there are many of churches that have grown weary and lost heart because they've lifted their eyes off of Jesus Christ. We're surrounded by a 140-year-old cloud of witnesses. But we don't focus there. We focus our attention on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our church history is great, but it's no substitute for Jesus. Our church programs are great, but they're no substitute for Jesus. Our church people are great, but they're no substitute for Jesus. We move forward. By fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ. Yes. And if we do, people will find us faithful. There's reality, folks. You did not earn your salvation. You did not work for your salvation. Rather, it was given to you in grace through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what this church is about. Preaching that life-giving message of Jesus. Not because we've earned it or deserved it, but because God freely gave us salvation in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. For the next 140 years, let us fix our eyes on Jesus and preach that life-giving message. Why? Because your kids need it. Because your neighbors need it. Because your neighbor's kids need it. Because your Co-workers need it. Scripture tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Therefore, we all need a Savior. Amen. May we preach that message. And may those down the road look back at us and find us faithful. Let's pray.